Oh, that was the nicest afternoon I have ever had. Talk about the calm before the storm, eh? It'll be okay. I know. I promise. Right, right, we'll calm her the second you get a chance. And if Leanne goes on the rampage, you warn me, won't you? Yeah, but listen, don't be clock watching, okay? Because I need to speak with Simon and make sure he's settled. Of course. Okay? I'll be waiting. No choice, he railroaded me into it. You're gonna have to get out a bit nearer the time. Listen, I've had 12 grandmas die on me, I'll think of something. I gave you plenty of time to prepare. He's a very persuasive fella. Oh, I can just see you at school. Dog ate your own work, didn't it? I had a mate whose dog actually did eat his own work, and no one believed him. <laughs> Oi, dear boy. No. Oh, don't let me into it. There's something brewing here. Pardon? My antenna is twitching. Stella. Or is it my love? Peter? Oh, no, no, not now, please. You're alive, at least. It's sober with a look of things. Yeah, I'm full of surprises. Yeah, well, I've just left Leanne and Simon in tears. Where? Rehearsing a nativity. Right. And that was after she was forced to lock up this place and pick him up from school. Where on earth have you been? Look, would you mind if I speak to Leanne before I give you a blow-by-blow -blow account? Look, just how much longer do we have to go through this? My name's Peter. I'm an alcoholic. Well, my name's Ken, and I'm livid. You can't just go missing without making a phone call. Drunk or not, it's unacceptable. You should have seen Simon's face. I've seen his face? Don't get smart with me. I'm not getting smart. Pull yourself together. Not making that phone call to her. Oh, shameful. Can I go now? Your green tags are 45, your red tags are 35, and this little beauty, she's 25. Well, that sounds very reasonable. You think that's reasonable? Listen to this. To you, 20. 20 pounds? Well, I can't go any cheaper. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't want you to. Sold to the lady with the smile. I'll get this shout, Stella, and your own. Now I'll pay for my own drink, thanks. Don't be rude, Carl. So what were you talking about when I interrupted? Homework. Northern Soul. You seem to disagree. <laughs> Both. Look, I had a mate whose dog genuinely ate his homework, and none of the teachers would believe him. He had, he had a brother who was big <laughs> down, down where you appear. Uh, that's where the Northern Soul bit came up. Ah, uh, very good. <laughs> you left the mic open on a switch this afternoon. I heard the two of you talking. This is brewing up nicely. Stop staring. You look like you'd rather die than come round for Christmas dinner. Now I stumble across you inventing conversations. Uh, look, something awkward happened last night. Uh, Lloyd. I know what's going on. Uh, no, you don't. I made a pass at Stella. Did what? She wanted none of it, obviously. I was mortifying. So there you go. She came round to warn me about Christmas to not to accept the invitation. Look, Stella's done nothing wrong. This is all down to me. Don't make a scene, Carl. So, you've not been... No, of course not. No, but you've got the wrong end of the stick. Although the right end ain't great either. You can't keep a hold of your own woman. So you make a play for oh, mine. Oh, it's hard oh. to deny. I ought to knock you about this oh. Oh. Lift up. I'm not proud of it. Let go of him! Don't panic on me, yeah. I made a mistake. I, I misjudged everything. Let him go. You're bad. Oh, Carl. No, fine. Fine, that's fair enough. I don't think I should work for you anymore. I'm not going to work for him anymore. Oh, come on, why should you suffer? Because I don't want to work for a bloke who tries to steal his mate. Girlfriend. Girlfriend? Oh, look, fine, OK, I accept your resignation. But the very heavy of them. You are lower than a snake's belly. Look, I'm sorry for everything. I hope we can still be, you know. What? Mates? Possible. Go on, get out. Refuse to shake his hand. I'm really sorry, Stella. I'm sorry, too. Lloyd? Don't even ask. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's put all of them going at once. No, that's not unfortunate, Ty. That's sabotage. Tyrone! Hi, 
you, Fizz. No, <laughs> oh, that was a birthday. Did you spoil her rotten? Well, I tried to, but, you know, luckily she's too young to realise. Oh, she's gorgeous. Just like a mother, eh? Oh, get away. <coughs> How's your love life, anyway? Still going strong? No, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Speak of the devil. I didn't expect you back yet. Oh, am I spoiling something? No, don't be daft. I'm on our road to go, though. Let's crack on, then. You know Fizz, don't you? Not really. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you. Is the immersion on? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll leave you two to it. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Fizz. bye all. Bye-bye. Have you slept with her? What? Ah, oh, thanks for the Christmas card. You organised early. Oh, I usually leave it too late. Go around on Boxing Day, pushing them through, screwing away before anyone sees me. <laughs> oh, it's horrible getting cards after Christmas, isn't it? I mean, you don't know what to do with them. Yes, sir. Have you hand-delivered everyone? Well, not Todd's and not Violet's. What about a certain fireman's? Truce. Even I can't believe I'm saying it with four flat tyres. Do you know what that looked like earlier? Somebody comes round to check on Max and there we are, rowing in the street like lunatics. Don't pin your parenting skills on me, mate. I'll pin a left duck on you in a minute. Oh, please, no. Look, if that social worker takes against us... I think you'd be OK. But if this carries on, I know what's going to happen. It'll get more and more out of hand and it's only a matter of time before someone does get hurt. We never even touched your tyres. And I had nothing to do with the trees. So we're just a couple of innocent blokes trying to make a living. True, says. Very wise. Thank you for the card. Mm. Well, I thanked you for my card, but you didn't react like that. Mm. It's in the area. <laughs> oh, I'll bet he is. Careful, you. Yes. And they took it into the house for me and set it in position. It's a real Norwegian spruce. How much? Oh, it was the smallest of three sizes. Twenty-five pounds. Mm. But it gave me a deal. Twenty pounds, as it was to me. Twenty pounds for, for, for a Christmas tree? What were they wearing? Stripy jumpers? Christmas trees aren't cheap. No, this is nothing cheap. Talk's cheap. Uh, shall we get one for outside the shop? A public tree? Oh, a community gesture. At Twenty-five pounds a pop. <laughs> we might even get a big one. Well, the largest go up to forty-five pounds. Forty-five pounds? I pay. Oh, well, well I, I suppose it's worth looking into. That cot she's seen. I'm just out of your share. Yeah, almost. Hey, the proverbial hot cakes. Mm, I know. Oh. Hey, it's and, and, and they're definitely right. Scandinavian. No, we just, just came in this morning. And be honest, Norris, does anything beat the smell of pine? Especially in this cold December air. No, I must admit, I am rather partial. <laughs> Well, we always used to wait till the 23rd when I was small. Then Mother and I would go and get one from the yard at the top of the road. Yeah. She would always insist that we, we left it to adjust to room temperature, you know, like a fridge. And, and then we'd decorate it. Well, these won't let you down. Get your baubles on straight away. Oh, well, it's outside the shop, actually. It, it's more of a, you know, a community gesture. Very nice. Yeah. I read to took some persuading, but... I just had a response from Leanne. They're on the way home. Uh -huh. The green ones are 45, the red ones are 35, and the yellow ones, 25. I think a yellow one would do. I like this one. Oh, uh, excuse me, I think you'll find this one's mine. Well, uh, what about this one? No, 
Too small. But it's bushier. No, it's bottom heavy. Oh, I'll give you 30. We don't do deals, Norris. You did for Emily. We'll take it. Hey, 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 there's such a thing as etiquette. Do you want the tree or not? I'm at liberty to mull. Yes, and we're at liberty to buy. Now, I'm stood here with the money in my hand. Ah, listen, I should give him first dibs. No, oh, well, forget it then. I'll try the greengrocers on tiles. Oh, no, 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 don't do no, that. No, listen, no, this, no, this no. is your finest Norwegian no, spruce. It can be very headstrong. <laughs> Right, that's 35 quid, Norris. Uh, uh, no, uh, wait a minute. You said the yellow labels are 25. Right. You for Cheers. real? Uh, mm, I'll sleep on it. Merry Christmas. Have a good one. I'm blaming you for trying, man. She is a fox. Ah, <sighs> well, you've heard then. Now, listen, he didn't hurt you, did he? Ego's a bit black and blue, but otherwise I'm all right. You know what? Should me and you just get wed and I've done with it? Why not? Can't promise any kids, mind. Who needs them? Nah, I'll book the church. I'll write the vows. I could do a lot worse. Thanks for feeling as though you need to say that. No. Listen to me, I've bit lucky one here. Don't know anyone who wants to buy half a cab for him, do you? You kidding? Nah. Fun, I'll live with it. How come? And it's not just this place, it's everything, you know? Steve don't give a monkeys, Gerald's gone. I've just made a fool out of myself in front of everyone. Hey, hey, hey. What's left for me around here? How much would they need? Not a lot. I have to work here too, though. There was a problem with the tax, man, but that's getting sorted now. So what you could do with is someone who's got a few grand kicking about that they don't know what to do with, plus they really want a new job. How are things at Frank's? Mm. Funny you mention that, mate. Hey, Jump, how are you doing? Hmm? Where have you been? Oh, I just uh, went to see a friend of mine. Got a text message from your dad in the end. Right, I'll put the washing on then. Listen, uh, Liam, why don't you take him over the road? How about that, eh, Si? Nip across the road, you see Grandma while Mum and Dad have a little chat. I might as well move in there. You take him. Oh, I might never get out alive. I've already had both barrels swimming, but he might have some more ammo in his stockpile. Right, come on this side. Are we still seeing Santa? We'll see, we'll see. Promise me. Hey, of course we'll see Santa. Come on, grab your school bag and you can do your spelling with Grandad. Come on. Hey, is it safe? Change the tape roses and pictures. Are you decorating? No. I want to start earlier this year. Right, what would you like to drink? I am in the mood for sherry. Uh, sherry it is then. <laughs> Look at all this. <laughs> Accumulates, doesn't it? Over the years, most of it's just tat. What's the point, isn't it? Jason made that, can you believe it? What, at school? No, last week. <laughs> and there's an angel in here that I'll Todd make with the tree. Oh, you won't put up that Merry Christmas banner for me, would you? Uh, yeah, where's your on it? That'll do. Oh, and there's some blue tack on it. That might be from 1983. There you go. <laughs> Most of the ours are uh, hand-me-downs from Leslie's mother, you know, just manky old things, but she'd never let us get new and... Uh, well, you know, there is plenty of room for sentiment when it comes to Christmas desks. I mean... This Santa is proof of that. Little Jason at school sticking his beard on. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, cheers. Cheers. And remember, don't let him fob you off. Uh, I won't. The same old excuses. He's getting tired. You can tell him that from me. See ya. Good luck. Look at these lights. I'll be surprised if they still shine. Yeah, um, didn't we have some things that the children made at school? Yeah, we had some sort of tinsel stars that were in the window, but I think it chucked them out. Hello. Hello. Hello, you five. Oh, I like the 
tree? Oh, I got it from the greengrocers on Tile Street. Ooh, is it a better smell in the world? So, how did it go? Oh, it was top notch. Brilliant. Nice hotel. Top notch. Yeah. That'd be a good idea for an aftershave, wouldn't it? Odor Christmas tree. No, 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 no. Odor fur. Now, if I could bottle that, I would make millions. <laughs> Who wants to smell like a Christmas tree? Mm. So, is everything rosy in paradise? Oh, Peter, how many more times is this going to happen? Midnight, he's not back. Three o'clock in the morning, not back. Six o'clock, breakfast time. I'm fumbling around for excuses so he doesn't think you've packed your bags and left us. Has he been OK? Oh, yeah, he's fine. Never better. He cried all the way through his rehearsal today. Asked if you were drinking. To be honest with you, I'm just glad I didn't have to tell him you were dead. I'm beyond anger. That's good. So, come on, where were you? I, um, I ran into Rob. Well, no, that's not true. I didn't run into him. Right, Rob from the support group. Yeah, he don't go anymore. I called round on him. I knew he'd indulge me. We played cards, not, you know, not for money, obviously, just for fun. And, and we sat up drinking vodka, and then before I knew it was too late for me to come home. Is he the one whose wife left him? Yeah, yeah, that's right. He lives on his own now, yeah. Right, so what time does he get on it, then? Rob, uh, he's, uh, he's not too mad, you know. Still holds down a job and that, so... Uh... <sighs> Look, Leanne. What? There's something I need to tell you. I think we should split up. You what? Well, you're right. I mean, it's not the first time it's happened, is it? It's not going to be the last time it happens. It's just going to just go on and on, and I'll just keep doing it. Because when I'm drinking, right, I'm drinking, and the last thing I thought about was phoning you and just taking all that. All what? All that, the ear bashing that I would have got, the shouting from you, the uh, bawling... Uh, the worry, the, the same you mean? old routine, all uh, that Excuse stuff. me, when have I ever, ever been anything less than supportive you to see, you? see, here we go, she's cranking it up. Go on, that's fine, just crank it up. I beg your pardon. Look, I, I, I can't be doing with this, right? I, I don't want this anymore, constantly having to defend myself. I don't want you on me back and nagging away at me all the time. I can't take the responsibility, all right? Oh, that's right. simple okay, as that. Fine, I fine. don't need it. If you don't need it, then what's Simon going to do, eh? Is he just going to sit here and fend for himself while you're out playing cards for fun? Yeah, fun. See, that's a dirty word these days, isn't it? But that's what's wrong with the world. That's what's wrong with marriage. That's what's wrong with families. That's, that's what's, what's wrong, wrong with, with everybody. Being an Love, I am not going to change. Live with it. Oh. I get it, I get it. You've seen your mate without a missus, free as a bird, he can get off his tree whenever he likes, and you've decided that that's what you want, is it? Is that what you want? You do yourself a favour here, right? You get out, please, while you still can. What if I don't want to get out? What is there here for you, eh? I mean, my dad can look after Si if I'm accidentally taken drunk. I took our marriage vows seriously. Oh, come on, Leanne. Our marriage was a farce. The first time round you was hoping I'd die. That's not the case, and you know it. And the second time round, I was true to form, OK? Maybe I wasn't drunk, but that was me all over, wasn't it? I was hurtful and vindictive, nasty. Why are you doing this, Peter? Why are you rubbishing our marriage? Because I don't want it anymore. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I want to get out of it. You're real, Peter. Look, I knew that we hadn't seen the back of this, but I married you anyway. I married an alcoholic knowing how hard life would be. And yeah, now that you're drinking, it is hard. But I'm not about to be abandoned or, or be discarded so you can justify one binge after another. What you've been today is honest. And as far as I'm concerned, Peter, that's progress. Yeah. I'm a wreck. Please. Listen to me. I am going to fight tooth and nail for this family. My dad, Janice, Stella. Do you think I want that for Simon? No, I don't. I want stability, and that has to be worked at. I'm in this for the long haul, Peter. Sober or drunk. Because I love you. And if you're lying in the gutter, I'm going to be there. Always.
You won't regret this, you know. She's a good little cash cow if you treat her well. Who is? Here he is, the man himself. What's she doing here? Well, as of now, I, uh, I work here. Actually, we can do one better than that, can't we, Lloydie? As of now, I own half. Is this a wind-up? Oh, Stevie, I'd have only spent it on ciggies. I'm off, you see. I mean, I've had enough, mate. I'm cashing in Becky's check and I'm gone. You've sold half the cab firm to Becky? Steve, he's done what? The idea just fell in her laps. Steve, say something. Mate, I I've had enough, OK? You, the taxman, Cheryl, Stella, Carl. I'm cashing in her check and I'm history. Right then, Santa, here we come. <laughs> See you. Right, bye bye. bye. See you. Bye. Have you remembered what you've been asking for? Yes, I've got a list. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> News for Steve and Tracy as Becky takes on streetcars. Find out what's to come from actress Kate Ford at itv.com slash Corey. Nobody's ever said how tall we can expect her to get tall. What are you dressed as? <laughs> She's not going to catch up and this is how she is. Our touching documentary, The Real Thumbelina, is next this evening. Uh...